from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of HPE's Discover 2020, the virtual experience. The Cube, the Cube has been virtualized, we like to say. I'm very happy to welcome in Neil MacDonald. He's the general manager for compute at HPE. Great to see you again, Neil. Wish you were face to face, but this will have to do. It will. It's great to see you, Dave. Next time. Next time we'll do this face to face. Next time, yeah. Hopefully next year, we'll see. We'll see how things are going. Uh, but I hope you're safe and your family's all good. And, uh, and as I say, it's good to talk to you. Um, you know, we've talked before many times. Uh, I, I'm, you know, it's interesting just to note the whole parlance in our industry is changing, even, you know, compute in your title. Um, and no long as do we think about it as just sort of servers or a box, you guys are moving to this as a service notion. Really, it's kind of fundamental or, or poignant that we see this really entering this next decade. It's not going to be the same as last decade, is it? No, I think our, our customers are increasingly looking at uh, delivering outcomes to their customers and their lines of business. And uh, compute can take many forms to do that. And uh, it's exciting to see the evolution in the uh, technologies that we're delivering and the consumption models that our, our customers are increasingly taking advantage of, such as GreenLake. Yes, so Antonio obviously in his keynote made a big deal and has in previous keynotes about GreenLake. Uh, a lot of themes on, on you know, the cloud economy and as a service. I wonder if you could uh, share with our audience, you know, what are the critical aspects that we should know really around GreenLake? Well, GreenLake is growing tremendously for us. We have around a thousand customers um, delivering um, infrastructure through the GreenLake offerings. And that's backed by 5,000 people in the company around the world who are tuning and optimizing and taking care of that infrastructure for those customers. There's billions of dollars of uh, total contract value under GreenLake now. And uh, it's accelerating in the current climate because really what GreenLake's all about is flexibility. The flexibility to scale up, to scale down, the ability to uh, pay as you use the infrastructure, which in the current environment is incredibly helpful for conserving cash and boosting both operational flexibility with the technology, but also financial flexibility um, in, uh, in our customers' uh, operations. Uh, the other big advantage, of course, of GreenLake is it frees up talent. Um, most companies around the world have uh, uh, challenges in uh, freeing up their talent to work on really impactful business transformation initiatives. We've seen in the last couple of quarters uh, an even greater acceleration of digital transformation work, for example. And if all of your uh, talent is tied up in managing the existing infrastructure, then that's a drain on your ability to transform and in some industries even survive right now. So GreenLake can help with all of those elements and. Uh, with all of the pressure uh, from COVID, it's uh, actually becoming even more consumed um, by uh, more and more and more customers around the world. It's yeah, right. I mean, I mean, that definitely ties into the whole as a service conversation as well. I mean, to your point, you know, digital transformation, you know, the last couple of years has really accelerated, but I feel, you know, I feel like in the last 90 days, it's accelerated more than it has in the last three years, because if you weren't digital, you really had no no way to do business, and, and as a service has really played into that. So I wonder if you could talk about your as a service, you know, posture and, and thinking. Well, you're absolutely right, Dave. Organizations that had not already embarked on a digital transformation um, have uh, rapidly learned in uh, our current situation that it's not an optional activity. Um, those that were already on that path are having to move faster, and those that weren't are having to develop those strategies very very rapidly in order to transform their business and to survive. Um, and the really neat thing about GreenLake and the as a service offerings that we provide in that, in that uh, context is how it can accelerate the deployment. Many companies, for example, have had to deal with VDI deployments in order to enable many, many, many more of their workforce to um, be productive when they can't be in the office or in the facility. Um, and uh, a solution like GreenLake can really help enable very, very rapid deployment and build out, um, but not just VDI, uh, many, many other workloads um, in high performance compute or in um, 
um, SAP HANA, for example, are all areas that were uh, bringing value to customers through that kind of as a service offering. Yeah, a couple of examples. Um, Nokia Software is uh, using Greenlight to accelerate their uh, research and development as they drive their leadership in the 5G revolution. Um, and they're doing that at a fraction of the cost of the public cloud. We've got Zenuity, um, which has built a private cloud for artificial intelligence and HPC that's been used to develop the next generation of autonomous software for cars. And finally, we've got also Porsche Informatic, who have built a fully managed hybrid cloud environment to accelerate all their application development without having to bear the traditional costs of an over-provisioned CapEx infrastructure. So all of our customers are relying on that because compute and innovation is just at the core of the digital transformations that everybody is embarked on as they uh, modernize their businesses right now. And it's exciting to be able to be part of that and to be able to be there to help. So of course in the tech business, innovation is the, you know, the mainspring of, of growth and, and change, which is you know, constant in, in our industry. Uh, and I, ha I have a panel this week with uh, uh, Dr. Go talking about swarm learning and AI, and that's some, some organic uh, uh, innovation that HPE is doing. But as well, you've done some uh, uh, M&A as well. Recently, you guys announced, uh, and we covered it, a pretty major investment in Pensando Systems. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what, what that means to the compute business specifically and, and HPE customers generally. So our partnership with Pensando is really, really exciting and it's great to see the momentum that it's building in delivering value to our customers. At the end of the day, um, We've been successful with Pensando in building that momentum in very highly regulated industries. And the value that is really intrinsic to Pensando is the simplifying of the network architecture. Traditionally, when you would manage uh, an enterprise network environment, you would create centralized devices for services like load balancing or firewalls and other security functionality. And all the traffic in the data center would be going back and forth, back and forth, tromboning across the infrastructure as you sought to secure your underlying compute. The beauty of the Pensando technology is that we actually push that functionality all the way out to the edge at the server. So whether those servers are in a data center, whether they're in a co-location facility, whether they're in the edge, we can deliver all of that security service that would traditionally be um, required um, in uh, centralized, expensive, complex, unique devices that were specific to each individual purpose, and essentially make that a software-defined set of services running in each node of your infrastructure, which means that as you scale your infrastructure, you don't have a bottleneck. You're just scaling that security capability with the scaling of your computer infrastructure. It takes traffic off your core networks, which gives you some benefits there. But fundamentally, it's about a much more scalable, responsive, cost-efficient approach to managing the security of the traffic in your networks and securing the compute endpoints uh, within your infrastructure. And it's really exciting to see that being picked up um, in financial services and healthcare and uh, other segments that uh, have uh, you know, very high um, standards with respect to security and infrastructure management, which is a great complement to the technology from Pensando and the partnership that we have with uh, Pensando and HP. And it's compact too, we should share with our audience, it's basically the card that you stick inside of a server, correct Neil? That's exactly right. It, uh, Pensando's uh, PCIe card together with HPE servers puts that security functionality in the server exactly where your data is being processed. And the power of that is several fold. It avoids the tromboning that we talked about back across the whole network every time you've got to go to a centralized security appliance. It eliminates those complex single purpose uh, appliances from the infrastructure. And that of course means that the uh, failure domain is much, much smaller because your failure domain is a single server. But it also means that as you scale your infrastructure, your security infrastructure scales with the servers. So you have a much, much simpler network architecture. And as I say, that's been delivered in environments with very high standards for security, which is uh, 
really a great endorsement of the Pensando technology and the partnership that uh, HPE and Pensando will have in bringing that technology to market for our customers. So if I understand it correctly, uh, Pensando is qualified for Perliant, Apollo and, and Edge Lines. My, my question is, so if I'm one of those customers today, what's in it for me? Are they sort of hopping on this for existing infrastructure or is it part of sort of new digital initiatives? I wonder if you could explain. So if you were looking to build out infrastructure for uh, the future, then you would ask yourself, why would you continue to carry forward legacy architectures in your network with these very expensive custom appliances for each security function? Why not embrace a software defined approach that pushes that to the edge of your network, whether the edge are in colos or actually out on the edge or in your data centers, you can have that security functionality embedded within your compute infrastructure, taking advantage of Pisando's technologies. So obviously things have changed, uh, specifically in the security space. People are talking about this work from home and this re remote access being a, a, a permanent or even a quasi permanent situation. So I wonder if we could talk about the edge and specifically where Aruba fits in the edge, how Pensando complements that. What's HP's vision with regard to how this evolves and maybe how it's been you know, supercharged with the COVID pandemic? So we're very fortunate to uh, have the Aruba Intelligent Edge technology in the HPE portfolio. And the power of that technology is its focus on the analysis of data and the development of solutions at the site where the data is generated. Increasingly, the data volumes are such that they're going to have to be dealt with at the edge. And given that, you need to be building edge infrastructure that is uh, capable enough and secure enough for that to be the case. And so we've got a, a great complement between the um, intelligent edge technology within the Aruba portfolio with all of the um, incredible uh, management capabilities that are in those platforms combined with technologies like Pensando and our HPE compute platforms um, bring the ability to build a very cohesive, secure, scalable infrastructure that tackles the challenges of having to do this compute at the edge, but still being able to do it in both a secure and easily managed way. And that's the power of the combination of Aruba, HPE Compute, and Pensando. Well, with the expanded threat surface, uh, with people working from home, organizations are obviously very concerned about, about compliance and being able to enforce consistent policies across this sort of new network. So I think what you're talking about is is very important that you have a cohesive system from a security standpoint. You're not just bolting on some solution, you know, at the tail end. Your comments. Well, security um, always depends on all the links in the chain. And one of the most critical links in the chain is the security of the actual compute itself. And within the HPE ProLiant platforms, we've done a lot of work to build um, very differentiated and exclusive capability with our hardware, our silicon root of trust, which is built directly into silicon. And that enables us to ensure the integrity of the entire boot chain and the security of the platform grounds up in ways that can't be done with some of the other hardware uh, approaches that are, are prevalent in the industry. And that's actually brought some benefit um, in, uh, in financial terms to our customers because of the certifications that are enabled um, in the um, uh, cyber catalyst designations that we've earned for the platforms. So we also know from listening to your announcements with Pensando and just observing security in general that this notion of micro segmentation is very important. Being able to have increased granularity uh, as opposed to kind of a blob uh, maybe you could explain, you know, why that's important. You know, the so what behind micro segmentation, if you will. Well, it's all about um, minimizing the uh, threat perimeter on any given device, and if you can um, minimize the uh, the vectors through which um, uh, your infrastructure will interact on the network, 
then you can provide additional layers of security. And that's the power of having um, your security functionality right down at the edge, because you can have that security processor sitting right in the server and providing great, great security at the node level. You're no longer relying on the um, network management and getting all of that right. And you also have much, much greater flexibility because you can easily, in a software-defined environment, push the policies that are relevant for the individual pieces of infrastructure in an automated, policy-driven way rather than having to rely on someone in uh, network security getting the manual configuration of that infrastructure correct to protect the individual nodes. And if you take that kind of approach um, and you embed that kind of technology in servers which are fundamentally robust in terms of the security because of the silicon root of trust that we've embedded across our platform portfolio whether that's proliant or synergy or blade system or edge line um, you get a tremendous combination um, as a result of these technologies and as i mentioned the you know the cyber catalyst designation is uh, is a proof point of that last year there were over 150 security products um, put forward for the cyber catalyst designation and only a handful were actually awarded, I think 17, of which two were HPE Compute and Aruba. And the power of that is that uh, many organizations are now having to deal with uh, insurance for um, cybersecurity events. And the catalyst designation can actually lead to lower premiums, where the choice of the infrastructure that you've made, such as HPE Compute, um, has actually enabled you to have a lower cost of ensuring your organization against cybersecurity issues because infrastructure matters and the choice of infrastructure with the right innovation in it is a really critical choice for organizations moving forwards in security and in so many other ways. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of things there, software defined, that's going to enable automation and, and scale. You talked about the perimeter, you know, the perimeter, the traditional moat around the castle, that's gone. Uh, it's the perimeter, there is no perimeter anymore, it's everywhere. Uh, so that whole you know, weakest link in the chain and the chain of events. And then the other thing you talked about was layers, you know, very, very important when you talk to security practitioners, you know, building layers in. So all of this really is factoring in security in particular, is factoring into customer buying decisions, isn't it? Well, security is incredibly important for so many of our customers across uh, many, many industries. and. Uh, Having the ability to meet those security needs head on is really, really critical. We've uh, been uh, very successful in leveraging these technologies for many customers in many different industries. You know, one example is we've recently won uh, multiple deals with uh, the Defense Intelligence Systems Agency, um, who you will imagine have uh, very high standards for security, um, worth hundreds of millions of dollars of, uh, of that infrastructure. So. Uh, there's uh, a great endorsement um, uh, from the customer set who are taking advantage of these technologies and finding that they deliver great benefits for them in the operational security of their infrastructure. Now, I wonder if I could ask you a question on the edge. I mean, as somebody who is you know, with a company that is really at the heart of technology, and I'm sure you're constantly look, looking at you know, new companies, M&A, you know, et cetera, you know, inventing tech, tech but I want to ask you about the, the architectures for the edge and just in thinking about a lot of data at the edge, not all the data is going to come back to the, to the data center or the cloud, but there's going to be a lot of AI inferencing going on in real time or near real time. Do you guys see different architectures emerging to support that edge? I mean, from a compute standpoint, or is it, is it going to be traditional architectures that, that support that? It, it, it's clearly an evolving architectural approach because for the longest time, um, infrastructure was built with some kind of hub, you know, whether that's a data center or, or in the cloud, and all of the devices at the edge would be essentially calling home. So edge devices historically have uh, been very focused on connectivity, on acquisition of data, and then sending that data back for some kind of processing and action at some centralized location. And the reality is that uh, given the amount of data being generated at the edge now, given the capability even of the most modern networks, um, it's simply not possible to be moving those kinds of data volumes all the way back to some remote processing environment and then 
communicating a decision for action all the way back out to the edge. First of all, the networks can't handle the volume of data involved if every device in the world was doing that. And secondly, the latencies are too slow. They're not fast enough in order to be able to take the action needed at the edge. So that means that you have to countenance systems at the edge that are now actually storing data, that are now actually computing upon data. And in a lot of edge systems, historically, they would evolve from very proprietary, very vertically integrated systems to uh, perhaps PC controller based systems with uh, some form of IP connectivity back to um, some central processing environment. And the reality is that if you build your infrastructure that way, you finish up with a very unmanageable fleet. You finish up with a very fragmented, disjointed infrastructure. And our perspective is that uh, companies that are going to be successful in the future have to think of themselves as an edge to cloud approach. They have to be pursuing this in a way that views the edge, the data center, and the cloud as part of an integrated continuum, which enables the um, movement of data when needed. You heard about the uh, swarm learning that you talked about with my colleague, Dr. Go, um, where there's a balance of what gets computed where in the infrastructure. Um, and so many other examples, but you need to be able to move compute to where the data is, and you need to be able to um, do that efficiently with a unified approach to the architecture. And that's where assets like the HP data fabric come into play, which enable that kind of unification across the different locations of equipment. It also means you need to think differently about the actual building blocks themselves. In a lot of edge environments, if you take a classic uh, a uh, 19 inch rack mount compute device um, that was originally designed for the data center, it's simply not the right kind of infrastructure. So that's why we have offerings like the edge line portfolio in uh, the, the HPE um, product set, because they're designed to operate in those environments with different environmentals than you find in the data center, with different interfaces to systems of action and systems of control than you'd typically find in the data center environment, yet still bringing many of the security benefits and the manageability benefits that we've talked about earlier in our conversation today, Dave. So it's definitely gonna be an evolving and new architectural approach at the edge and companies that are thoughtful about their choice of infrastructure um, are gonna be much, much more successful than those that take a more incremental approach. And we're excited to be there to help our customers on that journey. Yeah, Neil, it's a very exciting time. I mean, you know, much of the innovation in the last decade was find inside the data center and in your world, a lot of times, you know, inside the server itself, but what you're describing is this this end-to-end -end system across the network and that systems view, and, and there's going to be a ton of innovation there. And uh, we're very excited for you. Thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. It was great to see you again. Oh, it's great to be here. And we're just excited to be here to help our customers and giving them the best value for the workloads, whether that's taking advantage of GreenLake, uh, taking advantage of the innovative security technologies that we've talked about, or being the edge to cloud platform as a service company that can help our customers transform in this distributed world from the edge to the data center to the cloud. Thanks for having me, Dave. You're very welcome. Awesome summary and always good to see you, Neil. Thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, our coverage of the HPE Discover 2020 virtual experience. We're right back for this short break.